For today's video, we are going to look at a generic timber frame construction for an exterior wall. Um, I'm not going, or what I will go through is more like the principles and the, um, the basic function that each of these elements and materials perform within that construction, so that hopefully do understand the basic principles um, in why we assemble these constructions in that way, and you can then apply that knowledge and adapt it to the very specific details that you are um, constructing and designing as well. So these resources, both of them are taken from the book, um, once again, Constructing Architecture, Materials, Processes and Structures, which has been edited by Andrea De Plazis. Um, all the links to this resource are down in the description box as well. I highly, highly recommend having a look at this book as it is really, really helpful. Um, and I also want to emphasize that if you do have any specific questions, if you do come across some details, reference buildings or anything that you are not quite sure how they are being constructed, feel free to reach out to me. Um, I will leave my email address in the box as well. Send through any questions regarding this. I'm always very curious to see other details and um, reference uh, or precedents and hopefully I can answer some of the questions that you might have. So with this specific um, construction I want to start from the inside to the to the outer layer so therefore from the um, the core of that construction the load bearing and the insulating um, layers. So on top here we have a plan view that goes around a corner Here's the section, and then we have a, on the right hand side, we have a really nice axonometric view of how that construction looks like. Again, in, in that kind of core, we have timber studs. Um, we can see them here in the axonometric views. And then on top of it, there's going to be a head binder and a bottom plate, bottom plate. And together, they are forming these kind of grid like frames. Therefore, the name timber frame construction. Of course, in the um, in the section down here, we can't really see them because we're not cutting through the timber. We are cutting through the insulation, which is sitting in between these frames. Um, we're always cutting through the insulation because if we were to cut through one of the timber studs, in that section, it would all of a sudden look like there would be a solid piece of timber. So that would give off the wrong... Um, it, will, it would look wrong um, in the construction, in a, in a section. It would give off the wrong impression of what, what it is all about. So, of course, um, the insulation is providing that thermal conductivity um, or improving the thermal conductivity, I must say. And then in addition with the timber frames, they, given the material properties, they do have a little bit of um, or somewhat good values in terms of thermal conductivity, but the main part will be um, done by the insulation and in combination with the two of them together, we hopefully achieve a value that is reasonable for the climatic conditions that you do find yourself in. Now on the outside, as well as on the inside of that construction, just to see this one is the inside, this is the exterior, here as well, same thing, interior and exterior. On both sides, we have a wood-based panel, and both of those panels perform in a quite specific ways. Um, on the one hand, both of them, or at least one of them, has a structural component to it as well. Because if we think about these timber frames, um, they are really good at um, holding these vertical forces, so any type of um, weights or materials and um, well, gravitational forces in general, they are really good to combat these forces and translate them into the ground. But the frames are not stable enough once we have horizontal forces. So anything that's pushing from that side um, will actually cause these frames to sort of distort. Then, then they kind of skew and they distort like this. So if a force were to attack from that side. Um, I highly, highly recommend building a, a little mock-up model of one of these constructions and play around a little bit and see how resilient they are um, to different, different ways that you push against them or the different ways that you challenge these structures. And of course, horizontal forces, um, 
here we are talking about earthquakes and mostly wind forces as well because they are attacking um, from a different axis. So either both of these panels, if not um, either one of these panels or if not both of them, will have a um, a bond with these frames and therefore helping to create a stable construction. So potentially even making these exterior walls into shear walls. The exterior panel, the one that I've highlighted here, also, as we can see, it's a number eight, has a bitumen impregnated wood fiber insulating board. So the bitumen impregnation refers to a waterproofing of that material. So it means that it is actually protecting the insulation and the construction that's sitting behind it from any type of water, especially rain that might be penetrating the wood cladding um, from getting into the construction. On the inside, this panel here has an, an additional function as well. And it's highlighted in the section as well, or section down here and the plan up here with this little dashed line in within the, the thickness of the material. And pardon me, <coughs> that dashed line is indicating that it's going to be a vapor tight um, material as well. Um, let me quickly double check. We have number three. So it says here wood base panel vapor tight. 12 millimeter, yeah. Um, vapor tightness, um, of course, is really important that if you have different concentrations of humidity on the outside and the inside, and that humidity is kind of traveling through your construction because of temperature differences, um, pardon me, not different, different humidity, potentially you might have different humidity as well, but it's mostly different temperature, and therefore, once that air with the humidity stored in it will travel through the, um, through the construction, at some point, this air will condensate uh, or potentially could be condensating. And we want to avoid that any liquid water is getting into that construction, specifically into the insulation and the construction, uh, the structural, the load bearing elements as well. So vapor tightness and waterproofing on the inside and the outside. Then we have some additional layers. Um, on the inside, there's also a um, installation <coughs> cavity, and then as a protective layer or as a finishing and internal lining. So this kind of um, that service cavity, you probably wouldn't find that in all countries. Not everyone does that, but of course you have a huge benefit if you have that little gap. Um, because that gives you actually enough space to have sockets for your power cords and everything and um, all the electricity and water pipes and all of these sort of things they can run within that air cavity as opposed to having been in the layer of insulation. If you have to, um, if you need to have all these pipes and cables and everything in here, you would actually drill through the load, uh, construction structure as well, um, it will weaken your insulation and it is much, much harder to get to again at a later stage if you have to do any maintenance or re um, repair anything as opposed to having an additional layer on the inside. Of course, that initial additional layer does also require a bit more material. So it is a little bit of a trade-off um, whether that is necessary or not. Then of course on the outside, and we can see that um, much better now here in the section as well, we have a vertical cladding. So the timber cladding is um, assembled in a vertical way. They could There's different types of details in how they are being put together. Some of them could be overlapping or they can be um, assembled in a, in a flush uh, relatively smooth way. That really depends on the architectural expression that you want to achieve here. But most importantly, behind the cladding you would have battens and a air cavity. It's indicated here with that little arrow. Um, so there's a little space in between that allows for air to travel um, usually from the bottom to the top, mostly because um, 
it, it's that kind of Jimny effect. So you have lower temperatures on the bottom, slightly higher temperatures on the on the top, so the air will naturally flow through that space. And the reason why we need that kind of airflow is to make sure that we have um, it helps to dry out your construction as well. Because again, the rain will um, or your, your timber cladding on the outside is exposed to the rain, it will get wet over time. And if that will be just applied straight onto that bitumen board in the back, um, all of a sudden water or moisture can sit in that material and it doesn't really dry out because there's no ventilation happening. And then you can have rotting materials um, or damage to your, to your construction in general. So we try to avoid that, giving it a bit of an airspace so it can dry out over time. Now, one of the things, of course, sometimes you might not want to have vertical battens, but you might actually want to have a, um, pardon me, horizontal um, timber cladding. Um, sometimes you might actually want to have a vertical cladding. Um, that's what we can see here. So the, the timber boards are um, assembled in the other direction. What that means now, because you need um, you need to assemble them in this direction, sort of. You need a batten that all of a sudden is horizontal. And if you only have those battens, they would actually inhibit that airflow because it, you know, can't go through. Therefore, you have a second layer of battens, counter battens, allowing that airflow to happen at a different, at the next layer behind. So that is really important to keep in mind that when you have um, vertical cladding, you will need two, um, two layers of battens to allow for that um, airflow to happen. So it's a little bit more um, material intensive and therefore also requiring a little bit more space in, um, let me see, there we go. A little bit more space in the construction so the overall thickness would be slightly slightly thicker in that second example so yes I hope that was um, that helped you to understand the basic principles and that give that gives you the the tools and the knowledge to kind of go on and develop your own details um, and adapt and apply all that knowledge to to, to the very specific um, conditions that you are encountering in your designs if there's any questions, feel free to drop them in the in the comments below. I'm happy to hear what you think. Um, yeah, thank you very much.